Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. So if there is one thing I hate is when video tutorials don't get to the point immediately. I don't want to waste your time, so let's get to the point. You're a reenactor or a LARPer, you take your armor out, forget to oil it, it's damp, sweaty hands, touching it, you fall asleep and you find your armor all covered in red rust in the morning and you panic. Is your armor ruined after all that hard worked money you spent on it? It's not. You can fix it and it's gonna cost you about three you're going to need a sponge, some regular kitchen salt, possibly fine, white wine vinegar and some oil. But why should you trust me? But let me show you that I know what I'm talking about. Now look at this Lorica Segmentata that I use for my both my Roman videos and historical reenactment when I can. The armor was unfortunately left out to rust, not by me but that's beyond the point. I'm going to show you some before and after. So you can see this very cheap method works. Now, very much will depend on what metal we are treating and what level of rust we are dealing with. So, I think my Lorica Segmentat is an excellent example for that because it's made of three different metals. Well, one, me one pure metal and two alloys, namely the girth hoops are made of mild steel, low carbon steel, the hinges are made of brass and the fastening loops are made of pure copper. The mixture of salt and vinegar is going to work on all of these but it will be more effective on the copper in this case but it will also work for removing any rust from any other metal. Well, vinegar typically contains 5 to 20 percent acetic acid by volume. Acetic acid is a weak acid but it works against rust very well against iron oxide. Now there is a whole variety and range of vinegars. The one I can vouch for is white wine vinegar so I'd, I'd stick with that because I've proved it, I tested it and it works. Salt simply speeds up the process. I normally like mixing a one-to-one -one ratio of salt and vinegar, but you can experiment with your own ratios. At the end of the day, if there is some salt in the vinegar, it's gonna work. Then you're gonna have to rub, and you're gonna have to do a lot of rubbing if the rust is deep, but if it's superficial rust, this is something that got there between one hour to one night, a couple of days perhaps, then you know not too much rubbing but you will have to rub. Now with copper since we're not talking rust we're just talking about this green patina that is forming then it's super easy you just rub it for 20 seconds and it will be perfectly shiny. Similar situation with brass although it might need a little bit more rubbing but steel is where things get a bit more complicated. How much you'll have to rub will depend on the level of rust we're dealing with. Now I'd like to underline one thing that is really really important so if you're getting bored about this tutorial just listen Listen to this and then click away. Rust converters. Never, ever, ever use rust converters on your armor. The reason is simple. It doesn't matter if on the label they call it rust killer or rust remover, it is a converter. What that means is that it will not remove the rust, it will convert it into something else. One of the active ingredients of most commercial rust converters is tannic acid, which is an organic polymer. What tannic acid does is that it converts the reddish iron oxides, the rust, into ferric tannate. Now ferric tannate, big problem and I had to deal with it in this case because unfortunately the person I lent this armor to decided to use rust converter without me knowing it. Now it can still be removed but it's a big problem because ferric tannate is a bluish black material, it's adhesive and rather stable. Now the fact that it's stable of course it's, it's good in a way but it's good if you're using it on fences or utensils of any kind. Why? Because you're going to paint over it so you don't care about the stains it leaves but armor that you want to be shiny and glossy like steel armor absolutely no. Now if you have done this, if you have made this mistake, don't panic it can still be rubbed off but you will need a lot more rubbing and in this case it took me three days. So to reiterate, use rust converters only on fences, on things you're going to paint, maybe wrought iron because you know blackish on a darker colored metal, it's all right I suppose, but never use it on steel, never use it on armor, helmets and whatnot. Now, normally rubbing by hand with vinegar works, although you might need to switch to a more abrasive sponge or pad if you see that the normal sponge or the green side of the sponge is not enough to remove the stains. Don't be scared about moving onto a very abrasive sort of material to, to do the rubbing. You might think it's going to scratch my armor. That's okay, polishing is scratching. It's just that if you do it with a balanced pressure, meaning equal pressure all over, all those scratches will look as a uniform layer. As long as there isn't like one or two scratches that are super deep and the rest is not, then that won't look good. So you'll have to experiment. Perhaps 
applying pr more and more pressure as you continue your polishing. But when you work with vinegar, one thing that is important is that you rub it off immediately, okay? So don't let your plate stand there with the vinegar on it because there is water in it and therefore it is going to rust if you do that. So it's kind of strange. It removes rust, but it also invites it. So what you want to do, you put your vinegar and salt solution on the plate that you want to rub. You start rubbing like crazy. And when, when you're finished, you just take a dry cloth. You can use an old t-shirt, which is what I do, and you wipe it clean. And then you immediately apply your protective oil and your plate will be perfect. Look nice and shiny, no rust. So what oil should you use? Well, any mineral oil will do the job, but of course, different oils have different protective capabilities against moisture and oxygen and whatnot and water. My, my two suggestions are using either WD-40 or ballast oil. Now I will say, I think ballast oil does a better job of providing a protective film. WD-40 is also good though. Personally, I prefer ballast oil. However, it does have a smell. So if you're not into the smell of ballast oil, then go for WD-40. Now after you've done all of this, you've removed the rust, but you still see that there are st some stains and you don't like them and you want to apply a second time of rubbing, this time you can use the oil itself. You don't need to go, go ahead and put again vinegar. You only use the vinegar and salt solution to remove the rust and to remove the patina on top of brasses, on top of copper, etc. For the second time, second polish, just go for the oil. As you polish, if you see that you will need a third time, like in my case, I needed to do it three times, because of the rust converter and the, and the iron tannate, because it's not removing the stain uh, as much as you want it to, then you might need to move into a mechanical means of rubbing, such as, for example, a polishing pad mounted on a drill. But as far as I'm concerned, most of the times, hand rubbing will be enough. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's a quick tutorial. I hope it was useful. Thank you very much for watching. Keep your plates in pristine conditions. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.